Well, welcome. Uh, the situation in Manipur is volatile once again. And joining me to understand what is happening there is uh, the former uh, DG of Assam Rifles, Lieutenant General Retired Nair is here with us. So thank you so much for taking time out. First thing first, after a brief lull, uh, for about two to two and a half, three months, we thought Manipur was trying to move ahead from the cycle of violence. Then from 1st of September 2024 onward, violence has come back. How are you assessing this renewed cycle? Uh, this violence itself, firstly, uh, thanks, Abhinima, for having me over. The violence, as you would have noticed in the last 15, 16 months, is, is cyclic in nature. Um, it began with that huge violence on the 3rd, 4th, or 5th. Then there was a lull again. End of that month, again, there was a spike. Then off and on, uh, uh, there were spikes. And essentially, these spikes are a consequence or uh, they're triggers when some uh, one particular community acts against the other. Uh, so this is uh, quite unfortunate, and the sooner that these get over, the better it is. And there are multiple things involved in this. There are wheels within wheels, uh, and background I'm not covering. It's all uh, known to you, known to the viewers. So two things that has happened, 1st of September onwards, um, is A, uh, allegations that drones have been now used. Manipur police has blamed cookie groups for saying that drones have been used to drop grenades or uh, some kind of uh, you know crude bomb to attack uh, the the methi population at least one woman died in kotur uh, it is said that she she died because of usage of drones your your take on that was that was that something that was being used earlier also drones have been used for um, many purposes usually surveillance uh, photography imagery agriculture such like things. So it's not new. In fact, uh, drones were used uh, against some of our posts also uh, in the initial part. But uh, that is something that has been happening and uh, it's not peculiar to Manipur. It's uh, used at many places. Only thing is, uh, there is no check uh, in Manipur uh, for reasons known to all of us. So in this, uh, what I was trying to emphasize was the fact that, uh, uh, in fact, when this uh, news first came to me, I thought, yes, it is quite possible it must have happened because it's being used so extensively in uh, Myanmar. But uh, here from the uh, footage that I saw, it, it was a, a light drone, a small drone, and uh, the shells, the impact on ground were uh, bigger shells. Um, and uh, there were reasons to believe that uh, it could not have been fired from those small drones. Uh, that was my take on that. So Maybe what people say, uh, sorry, yeah. Yeah, so it's because, because Manipur police, uh, you know, on its social media handle also, put up a picture of a drone that they that seized and they said that we are sending this for further analysis. So when you were saying that, you know, the lady who died, when you when you got details about her death, your assessment is that she died because of splinter injuries. So possibly... No, no, no. No, 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 not splinter injuries. I, I, it's not my assessment. It is there in the media there that she died of a bullet injury. She died of a bullet injury. So and then how, how the does the injury. drone really fit in? I mean, you think drone was used for surveillance and not really to uh, drop a grenade at, at her residence? See, there was fighting happening between the two factions. The factions were fighting while this drone and these rockets were being fired, rockets, swampies, whatever, were being fired. Uh, there was fighting that was happening between both the factions. So... It's possibly in that crossfire that she would have died. That's and on the what, bullet. What about allegations, sir? Because uh, the next incident that happened in Moiran, uh, allegations were that rockets were used uh, and one uh, Methi uh, individual who was possibly a priest, he lost his life. See, the, the term rockets, as we understand, uh, people of uh, with a military background, they're of a specific kind. These are all improvised things which can be called as rockets because they move that way, but not surely in the category of uh, uh, weapons that one would associate are being mass produced. These are all indigenous weapons. These pompies, for example, uh, have been used uh, long back, almost uh, 100 years back in the uh, Ang anglo Kuki uh, war or uh, whatever you call that. It has mm -hmm. been used uh, that time also. Uh, so now progressively, they, uh, some modifications have been carried out. The media, uh, all the national media has covered it extensively in the last one year. I'm, I'm sure everyone has seen that. So there's nothing new in this. 
so then i mean if i'm understanding what you your what you're saying correctly is it's not as if a new chapter in the kuki methi conflict is being is being written the conflict has been there for the last 18 months and that cycle of violence is continuing it's no not that it's, added, that's, it's that's not a new element in terms of drones or rockets or new uh, foreign fighters or anything that that's what uh, no, you understand no. but uh, having said that because of the extensive usage of drones across uh, in myanmar we should not be surprised if uh, these come in larger numbers that is the larger thing that we should be speaking of rather than what's happened what's happened has happened right uh, so can you can you clarify on that foreign fighter bit also there are a lot of apprehensions especially in the imphal valley that what's happening now is because of a foreign power either arms and ammunition are being pumped in from across the border somewhere or foreign fighters are coming in can you just clarify the situation for us uh, on uh, the uh, you know help from fo foreign powers or involvement indulgence it's been there i mean uh, most of the unrest in the northeast for the last 60 65 70 years is as a consequence of uh, foreign powers interfering there uh, go back in time from the naga insurgency onwards there have been a hand of uh, our northern neighbor Uh, even as late as now, uh, you have uh, Paresh Brawa sitting there in Yunnan, in China. That's where he's sitting. So, uh, will there be a foreign hand? Uh, I mean, this this is like a no-brainer. But who exactly in foreign hand? I'll not be able to comment on that. But is it is interest? It is in the interest of uh, countries that are enemical to us to uh, kind of cash in on the situation that exists. Uh, Now, let's understand, of, sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry to interject, but you know the situation also seems to be aggravating around this decision taken by the government of India uh, that uh, Assam rifle units must be moved from Manipur to Jammu and Kashmir. Now, we do know that Jammu and Kashmir, especially Jammu area, um, has has a show, thrown up terror-related challenges. There's election round the corner, so the government is trying to strengthen the hand of the security grid there. But that has led to a specific kind of narrative. in manipur about why assam rifles is is being uh, withdrawn so to say especially the methi seem to have uh, uh, an axe to grind i mean they have a lot of complaints about assam rifles i will not be able to comment on that arnav because it's a decision taken by the government but let me specifically talk of the battalions that are going there and you know it's for a uh, purpose that they're going there the jammu region has seen a lot of uh, militant terrorist activity of late last 2 to 3 months so uh, that i think is in the fitness of things mm -hmm. and uh, what is more important for us to realize rather than debating whether we are succumbing to somebody's pressure or you not listening to somebody that's an aside what is important is how do you tackle the situation that is there and uh, assam rifle battalions uh, whenever they have gone to jammu and kashmir they have done fabulous one of the battalions that is going now of the two uh, has uh, established an all time record there so i think it is in the fitness of things uh, the government would have taken the decision and and would you think that this grudge against assam rifles is now no longer limited to your former force alone because we've also seen at least one member of the legislative assembly write to the union home minister saying what are paramilitary forces really doing here they are quote unquote mute spectators so you might as well withdraw them that sentiment seems to be gaining traction on the ground so what is the issue with the presence of the paramilitary forces i thought the center sent them to ensure that peace prevails and and to be fair i think they did ensure peace for at least 2 3 months it would be unfair to blame uh, the military paramilitary forces as some rifle cpf i think they've done uh, whatever best they could under the current challenging circumstances that are there uh, but going by the demands that are coming it all began uh by in the initial part it was assam rifle should go back should be withdrawn then it was indian army should also go back then it was crpf should also go back then it is if it's further scaled up to all the central forces should go back so who will handle the situation there uh somebody has to handle the situation there and uh, nobody in a better position than the central forces because central forces have no axe to grind they are not biased they can't be biased but but that seems to be the allegation sir uh it seems that the kuki group especially assam rifle they have a special affinity or they have special trust in and the methi groups have zero trust in assam rifle so for, for that matter even the central forces how did matter come to this stage where uh, on ethnic line central paramilitary forces or were also been seen this could be this is a question that should be thrown to them uh, all i can say is assam rifle like the other uh, central forces have been absolutely neutral there's no way 
they could have been partial to anyone. Neither have they done it earlier, nor will they do it in future. So it's as, them, as, let them as I'm speaking to you, as, sorry, I'm interjecting again, but as I'm speaking to you, the news coming in from Imphal is very worrying. We do know that student groups there had gone and laid a stake outside the Raj Bhavan. They won, went to meet the governor also. And one of their key demands is that the unified command control must be with the state chief minister. Uh, in terms of how the unified command really works, and in, in a situation like this, uh, what do you think is, is the way forward? Uh, the correct advice, because we've seen Unified Command work in Jammu and Kashmir also. Is the situation comparable to what we're seeing in Manipur? Is it in the best interest of the state if it remains with the center or is the demand, demand uh, you know, valid to, to hand it over to the chief minister? Uh, well, two situations can never be alike. And surely JNK is not Northeast or Northeast is not JNK. They're entirely different. We should not mix these things up. So if there is a particular kind of command that's happening in one place, let's say JNK, it may not necessarily be the case that it will succeed here as well. Um, I think uh, nobody is better disposed than the uh, government to decide as to what works best. And uh, in the current, uh, which government will not want peace to be restored at the earliest? They have multiple agencies, they have multiple sources telling them. They know best. So uh, if they feel this is the way it can be handled, maybe this is the way. But again, uh, tomorrow, if the situation turns even worse or takes a totally different turn, I'm sure the government would do a rethink and think of some other arrangement to handle the situation. Hmm. Right. Uh, and also, sir, if if the central government uh, decides on this demand that the central forces be withdrawn, is the Manipur police in a, in a position to be able to handle the situation on their own? That you should ask the <laughs> Manipur police. I mean, I mean this, is, this is a question anyone can answer. When in a state there are two communities fighting, can it be left to the two communities or the other three, four communities all uh, included? One is the uh, affinities that will be there. Second would be the numbers. Where, where would they make up the numbers to uh, arrest such a situation? And, and this perception has been challenged by the local police there, that the Manipur police is actually divided along ethnic lines. Uh, but you have had first-hand experience. You've just uh, come back from Manipur. You've handled Manipur earlier also. This allegation, this perception, uh, do you quantify it that Manipur police is divided along ethnic lines of Methis and Pukis? Uh, what I would say there is uh, ethnicity is very strong, uh, no matter where you are. And uh, even if there is in some way, some rationality. The pressures are so high, uh, the people really have no choice. Uh, they have to think of their family, they have to think of their children. So uh, given the situation that exists there, the quantum of violence that is there, uh, I feel uh, this attachment towards one's ethnicity is prime. Everything else is secondary, which should not be the case. So you maintain that the Manipur police that we are seeing right now is actually Maiti police. All Maiti representatives are left off in the Manipur police and the Kuki representatives are not there anymore. No, no. Manipur police has got Maitis, it has got Kukis, it has got uh, Nagas, it has got uh, others also. There are some from All India also. The context when I spoke was, it was about the question of specifically Maiti and Kukis. Mm -hmm. So these two factions, obviously they are under pressure. So they would have gone back to uh, where their uh, people are. So you should not then uh, spin doctor it in a manner to make it look like uh, it's split down the middle. That's that's not the context. The context is uh, the loyalties are so fierce, they've gone back to where they belong. And surely that's not uh, the way forward. It, there is a necessity for them to come together if this problem has to be solved. My final couple of questions, sir. Uh, internet has been suspended again for about five days uh, and uh, there is curfew in Infal. So it's it's for, it's a deja vu-like like situation. How much did it help when last time these measures were taken? How are things going to improve? Will things improve by these measures that are being taken right now? Uh, you know, whenever the situation goes out of control, there is a necessity of an internet shutdown. But uh, it cannot uh, continue for long. Sooner rather than later, it will have to start because Children will get affected, studies will get affected, everything gets affected, health, um, uh, medical, everything, whatever you think of.
transportation. So uh, it's not a long-term solution. Maybe it is to address the current violent situation that is existing there. Will withdrawal of Article 355 help in any way? Uh, the DGP, the advisor, the chief secretary were all sent by the center, rushed in by the center. Um, now there is a demand that all of them be sent back. Will it help matters? No, that's again for the center to decide. I am not on ground. Will it help matters state? when center intervened in this way? Uh, at, at the start of it? Yes. Uh, perhaps things would have been worse if center had not intervened. Okay. And my final question, sir. What is the way forward? 18 months and there's no end in sight. Each side has complete lack of trust in the other. How do you see things moving forward from here? My constant refrain in this is, uh, the starting point really is with the people. They have to realize uh, that this cannot carry on endlessly. At some point, it has to stop. And that point is every day. It's today. If not today, it should be tomorrow. If not tomorrow, at least day after tomorrow. That is how they should be looking at it. They've seen uh, what, I mean, how much uh, behind Manipur has gone in this in these 15, 16 months. Uh, look at the state, how progressive it was. Um, and uh, I wish that this stops uh, at the soonest. My good wishes for them. And it can only happen if the two communities take a step back, realize that uh, it is best for them, for the future of their children, that they should stop this. In that, the elders, the civil society organizations, the youth, uh, and all the people who are carrying weapons have to realize this. Uh, otherwise, uh, this situation will only go from bad to worse. So, but I have to ask you this. When you say civil society groups also have a role to play, but then there are groups within uh, the communities. For example, let's talk about Meera Paivis. Um, there, there are documentary evidences now as to how they are actively uh, playing a role every time there is a... Uh, protest happening or they want to stop the forces from reaching a particular area. So would you identify a specific section within the civil society or within the community in which uh, you have faith in that this particular section, either the, the elders or the, the women or the children or the youngsters can the help? Women, Arunima and Manipur are very strong. They have a great influence over the society. Uh, unlike the other parts of our country, they've played uh, a very good role in the past. If at one point of time, Manipur was known as the drug capital of India, HIV capital of India. Why it has come down is totally because of the proactive manner in which the Mirai Paibis acted against the youth. Uh, the youth listened to them. Uh, so I think this is a moment in history, in time, when uh, Mira Paibis and the other women organizations of the other groups should cast aside uh, all the misgivings that they have about each other and think for the children, which I'm sure they will do sooner rather than later. Uh, so Meera Paibi is the most important, and then the elders, and then the youth, in that order, if I can say that. So you mentioned drugs, and I can't let you go without asking you this. How much of a role is uh, narcotics and poppy cultivation playing in, the, in this current round of violence? I mean, leave aside what happened earlier, but how much of a role is the current uh, cycle of violence seeing and of, of narcos and poppy cultivation? Actually, the people in NCV would be able to un answer this better. But uh, it's fair to assume, and like you said in the past, uh, narcotics have played a very important role, not just here, anywhere else, uh, anywhere else in the world. In the entire Northeast, in Myanmar, it is still playing. Um, so don't be surprised that there is some amount of uh, the funding from drugs, which may also be going in transshipping, uh, selling of weapons, ammunition, all of that. Right. So thank you so much for taking time out and helping us understand what's going on in Manipur. Really appreciate your time. Thank you, Arunima. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Thank you.